10% of Netflix users are inactive, what do you do? Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we have a product management mock interview with Chloe. And before we get started, Chloe, can you tell the audience a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so hi everyone, my name is Chloe Ennett. Um, I'm about to be an RPM at Facebook uh, in a couple of months. So yeah, excited to be here. Awesome, love to see it. So for today's question, suppose you're a PM at Netflix. You notice that 10% of Netflix users are inactive. What do you do? Okay, um, so the first thing I would want to do is, you know, to just clarify a few things. So do we already have like a set understanding um, on what we consider inactive? Or is that something you want me to define myself? Like, are we saying, you know, we haven't seen X amount of users or 10% of users logging in in X amount of time. Is that something you want me to just figure out? Yeah, if you can figure that out, that'd be great. Okay, great. Um, alrighty, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the only thing that I would want to clarify off the bat. Maybe, maybe something else actually. So am I assuming that, you know, I can get information from you, like your, like my data science team or, or whatever. I can just get more information for you to kind of quantify the problem. Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. So um, I'll think about my structure for a little bit and then I'll hop right into my answer. Um, so in terms of structure, I'm thinking that first I want to get some more information, kind of quantify the problem, right? If I was a PM at Netflix, this is, or these are the steps that I would take. Um, and then I'll propose like a game plan and evaluate and just think through um, you know, what a final like starting point would be for me. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. So just to ground myself uh, here a little bit, when I think about Netflix, right, and if they're like, oh, like what their overarching uh, mission would be, I would say that, you know, it's to keep users happy or like entertained, right? So some like high level objective could look like um, as a company like Netflix, we would want to maintain X number of active users, um, you know, like at a given time, let's say like week to week or even monthly, like X number of active users. And so, delving into what I would consider activity, right? Netflix is pretty straightforward. You kind of just log in and you watch content. So in my head, I would think as, I would think activity to be, um, you know, frequently logging in. Uh, that could be, you know, again, some, some time that would make sense for us, like frequently logging in and then also engaging with content. So when I think about engagement, I think about, you know, like rating, like up or down, or maybe adding, you know, content to your list and Netflix has that thing that's like my list and you can add like shows that you watch frequently or movies that you um, watch frequently. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm thinking about for activity. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you've listed several different things here like pressing the ratings, the logging in action. I'm wondering if you had to just pick one activity, what would you say is the most critical for you to define a user as active? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think in my head, I'd probably say that first one, right? So like logging in and then like clicking or watching at least one thing, right? So logging in and then clicking on a show, clicking play and like watching. Okay. And that's kind of what I would think is like active, right? So that action is happening, let's say, um, you know, like week to week or even just over, over some time, let's say week to week. All right, so just this activity of logging in and watching a show, 10% of users are not doing this. So now we want to know what you would do. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great way to kind of just hone in. So 10% of users are not logging in and they're not watching content. Why? Like, what would I do? How would I go about um, solving that? <clears throat> okay, so to check back in with my little like plan that I came up with, quantify the issue, propose game plan, and then evaluate, uh, we're still under quantifying the issue. So what I'd want to do next is kind of hypothesize, right? Get some more information and see whether I can sort of diagnose the issue at hand. So going through a few things here, um, I know that the market, the streaming market is, is kind of saturated or is heading towards saturation. A lot of people are coming out with new um, new services. So I would ask you as you know my go-to person on my team, um, do we, are there any like new streaming services that have come up um, recently or in that same time frame that we noticed the drop in activity? I've looked at some reports and news articles and it seems like Disney Plus is pretty big. We definitely still have traditional competitors like Hulu and um, HBO. Okay, so in my head though, those maybe have been around for at least six months. So in the past, um, 
let's say in the past month, there haven't been any like new people coming out or like Disney Plus or Hulu or haven't like, changed their plans, like make it, made it like super cheap or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, cool. Um, and then have we done anything differently? Like did we switch around, you know, where the play button is or uh, did we make everything green on the front screen? Like did we change anything on our end recently? The engineering team is just always shipping new things every week, so it's kind of hard to tell, but just overall, there haven't been any major feature changes or improvements or new features shipped. Cool. So they ship new things, so nothing like out of the ordinary has happened. Right. Yeah. Next. All right. So have we released uh, any new content lately? Like have we, I know obviously Corona put, um, you know, a stop in our production, our regular production cycle, but have we like released anything new? Uh, lately? Yeah, so with COVID, we have seen a slowdown in the new content that's been released. All right, so nothing nothing new lately. Cool. Um, and then just a final thing, or a final couple of things, I'll say. Is this happening like in all countries? Like we're seeing this drop like amongst all our users, nowhere in particular? Yeah, globally. Okay, globally. Um, and then a final thing, are we trending on Twitter? Do we have any bad PR? Is anyone talking about us writing articles? Did we do something really bad lately? It's just this typical memes about Netflix. There isn't really anything negative there. Typical memes, nothing negative. Perfect. Okay, so, so just to recap the information that we have so far, um, you know, aren't there aren't any new like major streaming services that's, that's uh, come into the market recently. So we know of our Disney Pluses, our Hulus, or our Disney Plus and our Hulu, <laughs> um, and they haven't done anything radical. Like they haven't made their plans super cheap or anything like that. Uh, nothing like new or out of the ordinary on our end. We obviously, because of uh, Corona, haven't been releasing any new content. And then thankfully we are not trending on Twitter. Nothing crazy has happened. Um, and then obviously we're seeing this drop all across the board. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I think now I probably want to pivot into um, proposing my game plan, right? If I could conclude, given all the information that um, I've gotten so far, I think I'd probably conclude that our users are just kind of bored. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of go, I'm, I'm going to um, hypothesize, or not hypothesize, I'm going to um, center my game plan around that assumption that our users are bored. Um, and that's what we're targeting. That's the reason why we've seen that that drop, that 10% drop in activity from our users. Does that sound good? Or is there anything else you'd want me to consider? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, um, great. So I think an overall goal here um, with, because you know we identified the problem to be users aren't logging in and watching, right? So our goal here would be to get users to log in and watch. In other words, get their attention. In other words, spice it up, right? We want our users to be happy and entertained. So I've thought about this um, in a few ways, or I've come up with a few solutions of what I would do if I was a PM on Netflix. Um, the first thing I think about is, you know, along those same lines of like getting our users' attention, um, I would want to do something like a, like a Netflix wrapped or like a Netflix recap. So kind of similar to um, what Spotify has done over the past couple of years, where users, you know, either at the end of the year or we could just kind of drop it by surprise, like right now, given the situation at hand. Um, you know, users get like a recap of like content that they've engaged with in the past or like their favorite shows or things that they've rewatched a certain number of times, um, you know, just to get the buzz going. Um, a pro there would be obviously leveraging social media, like getting people talking is always a good thing. Well, not necessarily always a good thing, but we can get their attention that way. Actually, a con would be that it could potentially backfire. So one thing that we know um, happens is that multiple people maybe use one uh, Netflix account, it's pretty common. And so we could potentially have a situation where like, hey, this was your favorite show and this is what you did. And it actually wasn't me, it was my sister who has refused to stop using my Netflix account. So that would be a uh, you know, potential con in that case. So if the problem here is that people are bored with the content, what do you think the goal for such a Netflix recap would be? What would it do? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great um, question. So I think in my head, because we technically can't like go out into the world and interview however many, you know, I won't say million like subscribers uh, we have or like how many are inactive, we'd want to sort of like get their attention um, in some way. And so because I hypothesized or the like conclusion that I came to, um, you know, my hunch was that users were bored. I feel like one thing that, um, you know, sort of a recap or like a wrapped thing uh, would do or could potentially do is just get them excited again, like remind them of like old content that they used to watch or like 
having launched them, especially because, you know, you did mention that we haven't like um, been putting out new content recently. So it's very possible that they may have felt like, oh, you know, I've been, I've binge watched everything that I already uh, used to like, but there's that one show that I used to love, like my sophomore year of high school that I haven't watched in forever. So that's just kind of some way to like bring them back around, get them excited again about their accounts. Um, another, sorry, did, did that make sense? I'm kind of going for it. Yeah, it makes sense. I see you're kind of th trying to get them to come back through some throwback content. Exactly, exactly. That's pretty much the point there. Um, yeah, I was going to say one thing. Oh, yeah. So one thing that we could also leverage again, because, you know, this would be great for users who, um, you know, have been inactive in the sense that they haven't been logging in, but maybe they've been users for a long time. So we have a, a great idea of like what they like, like what they used to watch. We have like a lot of their, um, you know, previous history and previous data that we could leverage. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about with that first idea. And then to go through these really quickly, the next thing uh, I would want to do is content, right? So this could either be um, new content or re like reviving old content. And so what I mean by that is like, we have a reputation or we maybe sort of developed a reputation of like canceling things after like a couple of seasons. So in this case, we either want to, um, you know, bring up new content or uh, maybe, I don't know if you can uncancel a show or like bring back a show that we may have canceled recently or in the past. And so a pro here would be obviously new stuff, like on, you know, if there's new content being put out, people love that. Um, another pro also would be uh, that we can sort of leverage that fan base that we may have upset um, in the past. So bringing back a show that people love that we had to cancel for whatever reason, um, would be able to get, um, you know, maybe some of those un inactive users active again, or and potentially even bring in new users, um, which would tie back to that first thing I said, right? Like maybe for us, our main like high level goals to always have like X number of users like active, you know, in a, at a given time. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and then so some cons obviously would be Corona. Like we had mentioned that there was a pause in our production cycle because of uh, COVID. I know some uh, uh, production companies are able to, um, have been able to start um, setting things back up again. Um, so potentially we could look into that, but I think logistically it would still be uh, a bit challenging to like get like brand new content in. Another thing is legally, I'm not sure what like bringing back uh, content that had been canceled or like shows that had been canceled what that would look like, because there probably was a reason why we had to cancel them and we lost the rights or anything like that. Um, yeah, so just COVID, logistics, uh, and then legal stuff. Also time, right? Producing new content always, like that takes time. So if we're looking at, you know, a drop of 10% of users over like, you know, whatever period we define, then we can't like promise them like new content in a week, right? It will take some time to, um, get that up and produce. Okay, so the final thing that I want to look at are new features. So the first idea I have under this is uh, what I want to call the in the mood quiz. And so what the, how this would work is you log in. So, you know, for the users that are inactive, if we're able to identify those specific users, you log in um, uh, onto your Netflix and you're able to sort of like do a little quiz like, you know, um, like, is this a movie night or is this just a, a binge shows on your own kind of night? Right, and so with that information, like with uh, the answers they give, we can then like suggest like, hey, why don't you watch this show? Or why don't you like rewatch the show that you um, used, to, used to like? So a pro here would be giving people like an exciting way to find new content. Um, and then obviously a con is that it might just be annoying, it might backfire, like maybe people like log on and they just don't wanna take that quiz. Hopefully there'd be a way to like X out or something, but it could still just be like um, potentially give a dip in, in their user experience. And then the second thing and last thing that I want to look at under those like new features, uh, the new features idea is, um, so you know how on that, there are those little, like there are all the different rows of content. And so there's like the first row that's like uh, trending right now, like around the world, or there's like my list and there's, you know, recently added and stuff like that. And so a, a row that I would propose would be something like, um, you know, you used to love this or like you haven't watched this in a while. So it would accomplish the same thing as you know, what we said with the Netflix recapping, just getting people reminded about what they used to love or like what they, um, you know, what they haven't engaged with in a while. And so it'd be a great way to like re-engage people. Um, and then a potential con is that it just might go unnoticed. I know that there are a bunch of those shows like Oscar nominated, blah, blah, blah. And then if you don't scroll all the way down, you may not see, um, you know, the like you used to love this um, row or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so to recap, we looked at the Netflix recap, no pun intended. Um, new content or reviving old content to bringing back shows that have been canceled. And then finally, the new features, which would be the in the mood quiz 
and um, you know, you used to love this like row. Um, yeah, do you have any any feedback? Would you like me to narrow down on one that I would probably like, uh, you know, propose to my team like, hey, we should do this to get our users active again? In the beginning, we talked about how these users are inactive and we defined them as they're not logging in and they're not watching a show. So if they're not logging in, they probably wouldn't see those two new features that you're building, no matter how cool they are. I'm wondering how you might start them and bring them back to the funnel. That's a great, that's a great idea. So if I, if I may, I think what I would do um, is probably not go with those two features to start. Like if, if I had to propose like one out of the you know, several different solutions that I propose, I probably wouldn't go with the new features. Cause like you said, obviously if people aren't logging in then they're not gonna see it anyway. Um, and again, because we're trying to sort of maximize um, you know, attention, like an, an attention grabbing solution, one that we think that would you know, really get them hooked or most users hooked. I think I probably would lean into that first one. So the Netflix recap, next Netflix wrapped thing. Um, and the main reason for that, especially like you said, our goal here obviously is to get users to watch, right? But before they watch, they have to log in. And one thing that I know like the Spotify wrap thing did is like it, it got a lot of people like wanting to log in, right? Like, hey, I want to know what my Spotify wrap says. So in that same regard, if we're able to, you know, drop this, it gets users talking, obviously again, leveraging social media, everyone's talking about like, hey, either, and it could be either a good way or a bad way. It could be like, hey, my Netflix raft is like kind of bad. It just gets people talking, gets everyone like, hey, let me go log into Netflix. I haven't logged in in a while. What's on my Netflix raft? Um, and that just like gets them back onto, um, onto our platform. And then that most likely will encourage them to either watch something that was in their raft or like, hey, I haven't scrolled through Netflix in a while. Like what haven't I watched? And then um, watch content and make them happy. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's uh, that's sort of what I would do if I was a PM at Netflix and I came across this um, this issue. Awesome. Um, just one quick follow up question: What are some metrics you would use to determine success? Okay. So the metrics that I would uh, look at first, I'd want to look at um, you know weekly active. Uh, subscribers or active users. So in this case, because our initial problem was that users aren't logging in, they're not active. I'd want to see after we pushed out like our Netflix wrapped or recap solution, um, are our users like, how are they feeling? Are they coming back? Are they, are they engaging with content? So I'd look over week to week initially just to get a feel and make sure that we're, um, we're seeing that dip like even now or like go back up into, you know, users being active again. Um, and then the, the other thing that I would look at is if we're thinking of, I didn't really delve much into what the Netflix recap would look like, but say we have a thing where it's like, here are all the shows that you watched like last year, right? And it shows you like five, or here are your top five shows that you watched last year, like three shows or whatever. Of the content that was you know, given to say you as like a, a Netflix user, here are the three shows. I'd wanna see like how many of our users went back and actually engaged with the content that we uh, kind of highlighted in the recap. So this would help us see like whether that was um, not only inf effective in getting people to log in, like that'd be a great way to say like, okay, yes, they actually logged in, they actually um, looked at their recap, but we'd also want to see whether they went that extra step and like watched or like, um, you know, engaged with the content that we've pushed out to them. Um, yeah, and so I'd probably look at those hand in hand um, initially after we, if we were to go with that solution. Cool, and if you had to pick one as your North Star? Northside would be the first one. Just again, seeing like, are people, have people logged in? Like, have they um, um, watched anything? So that would be the weekly active uh, users over. And I really monitor that metric like over, you know, say the first like three weeks after we pushed out the Netflix recap solution. Awesome, Chloe. So this is awesome for our interview. We're done here. And I'm curious before I give you any feedback, if you could give some self-reflection. Okay, so in terms of uh, self-feedback, I think the first thing I'd probably do um, is slow down. I feel like I got a little better over time, but you know, in the beginning, just making sure that I'm you know, pacing myself and not talking too quickly. Um, I think I did a good job of sort of checking in, although sometimes because I was talking really fast, I had to you know, pause, like check in, but that's also super important, make, important making sure that you're uh, kind of looped in with me at each point. Um, I think, I probably should have asked a bit more you know, clarifying questions. Uh, one thing that I know I should have asked is like, is this happening over a particular uh, time? So I kind of kept saying like, oh, sometime that like we defined or we would define. Um, so I probably should have specified, like, hey, have we seen this drop like over a month or you know, this was happening the past day. Um, and then, yeah, I think my structure was also kind of good. Just it was sort of high level and I found that 
that's always best. And so instead of going into the like very detailed, this is what I'm going to say, and this is what I'm going to say, this is what I'm going to say, I just kind of keep it high level and making sure that I, I sort of check in with you as I go. Uh, yeah, what did you what did you think? <laughs> you probably have a yeah. lot more feedback for me. <laughs> well, overall, I thought this was a great mock interview. I loved how in the beginning you stated the goal, which was around the active users. And throughout the entire interview, like two or three times, you always went back to that goal and thought like, hey, does this feature help us meet this goal? And that was really, really powerful. And you also had some really creative solutions around like Spotify recap and taking inspiration from like some sort of BuzzFeed quizzes kind of. And I, I really liked your approach on how you would tackle this. So like we, we went through the root cause pretty quickly and you were able to identify the root cause. And when we went through the uh, solutions, I liked them. The one thing that I would say is just always remember in the beginning, we defined the inactive users as, you know, they haven't logged in. So some of those solutions might not fit. Um, maybe some of those are longer term features after we meet some of the shorter term. And the last piece of feedback I have to give is around your metrics. I think the two you gave were good. One was super high level in terms of are we getting users? And the other one was around the engagement for the specific feature that you described, which was the recap feature. Um, two features or two metrics that I would add is one around acquisition, which is around how many people are coming in and using this. Uh, maybe you know, you're sending this through push notifications or emails. Um, and then the other one is around retention. So if we bring back a user, are they a quality user? Do they come back and do they stay and are they retained? Overall, this was a great interview. Thanks. And for the audience, good luck in your upcoming PM interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.